Okay. So, I tell a story, and I like to hear what, you know, your initial thoughts and feelings are when you hear the story. This is a story of a, of a woman um, who uh, heard about a meeting going on in her community. It was a town hall meeting, and it dealt with issues of African descendants, of which she was one. And uh, she was very excited, and she went right out. It, as it was, it was the second uh, town hall meeting that had been held. And she went, and she was very impressed with the presenter and with the information and with the turnout and with the energy and the vibe. It was very much aligned and straight up consistent with her own uh, visions and goals and, um, you know, desires to see happening. You know, she recognizes the problems in her community and, um, you know, envision to see just such things going on in the community where people were coming together to um, become more informed about themselves and what was going on and, and, and hear some things that they could do, possibly even different, that would help change the course of their communities and their families and their own individual lives. And so she was very impressed with the brother and the people, the group, and she right away signed up, you know, to support. And she was contacted by the brother and uh, he, you know, set up a time to meet with her, which she did go and meet with him. And he talked with her, and you know, the thing was too, he uh, is also a person that was in her line of, of work or business, you know, the same the field of study uh, as well. And so that was really exciting because she had not thus far found professionals in her, you know, line of work who were focused on community issues, especially pan-African, pan-nationalist uh, area. And so she was like just enthralled and ready. To, to work together and uh, so the brother you know was seemingly interested in this, her views and her thoughts and they came together he talked with her about some of the challenges that he had already faced uh, in the development and moving forward this agenda that he had uh, to educate the community and to you know expose the acts of injustices that were going on and so forth and he talked about some of the injustices that he had experienced with the people, the members, his early members, and his early uh, resources for support. One of the resources he had was that he had someone who donated a house to give him, you know, space, and he had someone working on to repair, and those people, you know, behaved in a very unjust and hurtful fashion. Um, and, you know, just the dynamics in terms of, you know, emotionally and behaviorally that we, we both share knowledge of and a desire to support change in, um, you know, he witnessed and he experienced. And he was, you know, experiencing, you know, the relational dynamics and group dynamics that come up within his early board that he had. And he was interested in this, this woman, uh, you know, coming on board and then working together to really build this from both angles. You know, he's uh, doing what he was doing in terms of teaching and working to complete his doctoralship. She um, had gone to school up to doctoralship level yet had not been able to finish it, yet certainly was knowledgeable and had worked in the profession for, you know, many years already. Um, you know, and so that was sort of the uh, plan, and uh, you know, she she signed on and uh, paid her dues, and um, you know, accepted the assignment in terms of uh, you know uh, a leadership position. And you know, she brings to the table, and I guess maybe looking back on it, maybe he wasn't he didn't really talk about what she would offer or could offer, but she did share with him that she offered, you know, a focus just on that, you know, helping groups come together and to build within themselves while the group does the work that they came together to do. And that is how we work sort of in concert. And she did make that clear because that's what she does. And he seemed to really appreciate it and asked her feedback about different things and, you know, asked her opinion. Moving forward, 
uh, you know, she came to the meeting and began to notice those patterns that he had been concerned about already. She began to see them quite quickly and had some ideals about what could help begin to bring together the group. And uh, okay, <clears throat> so she noticed the concerns that he raised in terms of the group member dynamics, uh, in terms of lateness, people showing up to meetings late, and then when held accountable or asked about it would become defensive and, uh, you know, marginalize the incident and things like that. And she observed, you know, in this first meeting, the group's interactions with each other and the dynamics, including how he interacted with his members and his group. And having heard his story in terms of what the group had come through thus far, now this had been their second town hall meeting, so they had been together for a little while and had struggled and worked together. And uh, so keeping this in mind as she observed the, race, the relational dynamics, she began to offer some uh, ideals and suggestions in terms of how the group might begin to come together in a way that uh, supported them with relaxing with each other and getting to know each other in a, in a little deeper level and a little deeper way because the more time you spend in new relationships with people, you begin to become confronted with their uh, personality, more of their personality, uh, more of their likes and dislikes and triggers, really, that's what it is, triggers to different uh, ways of thinking and behaving and feeling the more you spend time and so because that's the case you want to develop even in a group organizational group meetings you want to pay very close attention to your personal relationships and how you would you know about each other uh, how you respect each other's triggers and you know people have to know their triggers and be able to to talk about what's happening in our relationship and interaction and so she began to offer that, and <laughs> because that is very radical and revolutionary in this society, it's something that we don't do, and we're programmed not to do, and at the same time, when people go into treatment mental health for mental health and therapy, that's the very thing that is talked about and people work to help them do. That's one of the things anymore. At least that's what therapy used to be, and really that is what will help people. Uh, make the changes and improve in their relationships and work uh, more effectively together in their relationships. At any rate, uh, the group and the members became a bit defensive. Uh, the other dynamics that will come up when a new person comes to the group, some of the group members are more cautious and suspicious and um, because of some other relational dynamics that appear to go on, between the leader and one of the female members, that particular female member seemed to experience the the woman as a as a threat to that uh, to that very different relationship. But it was like you know, so you have to look out for the impact of dual relationships on the group, on the impact of the group, and those dynamics were coming up. And, and let's see, let's see, if we can move it along as we go along in the story. Uh, uh, you know, that was initial. So after the next town hall meeting, the brother, you know, inquired, he called, he asked the sister what, what she thought about how things went, what he said, what the response was, and she began to give him honest feedback. And it was at that point that things really began to change. See, one of the things uh, she noted that he did in his presentation to the community now, of course, he's speaking to a community of victims of this system. and. Uh, uh, his uh, language in of what he was sharing, it's like what he was sharing was right on point and perfect for the people to hear. There was just a suggestion to shift the focus and shift the words and shift the blame off of the people and language it in just a different way. Um, she let him know she thought that it was probably uh, hurtful for the people to kind of hear a message that again, they're the bad person, it's all their fault. And of course, we understand that people have levels of accountability in their experiences. It's not all their stuff. And that's part of the, one of the memes, the major memes in this system uh, is that, you know, the victim is somehow caused their victimization. It's their fault. 
at, you know, in some way, we we have scapegoats. Jesus is the biggest scapegoat around, um, and we tend to scapegoat people. We tend to blame the victim. We let African descendants know uh, for sure that they, in fact, are the problem. That's the meme in this European culture. And that meme seemed to be passed on to the people that night. And she, you know, um, you know, again, respecting the people's level of accountability and wanting them encouraged to encourage them to tap into their power uh, to do something different. It was just required maybe a changing of the words. And it seemed, again, from that point forward, he really... Um, there was problems. Another one of the women in the group uh, heard about the comment that the, this woman had made. Uh, apparently he shared with her that this is what this woman had said to him. And so then she in turn came at the woman in such a way uh, as to discount, minimize, marginalize, find fault with you know what she said. She said in conversation, uh, yeah she did say to the woman, I heard what you said and this is what I do and this is what I do to my children and I'm going to continue to do it. You know just very defensive and very protective of the need and the desire to uh, <clears throat> cause harm, intentional harm. You know um, be aggressive in your approach with the victim. I'm going to aggressively uh, force this victim to do different and let them know that they're the problem and it's like you might just want to change that that language and that energy and let's think about it and come at them from this perspective was the intent uh... so the sister and, and uh... so as you know time went on the dynamics unfolded within the group such that they did this woman spent about probably about six months if that much a part of this group and in fact the group it fell apart and on its own um, even after she left the group uh, one of the other things that happened in the group for the woman, um, aside from these dynamics with the women uh, being very defensive and one for, you know, and for different reasons, uh, he being very uh, then uh, standoffish because he didn't want to change his approach and I suppose he didn't want to think about his approach as possibly problematic and that he could do something a little different. He didn't want to hear that and so he shut off from the woman but she was still interested and be a part of this group and, and there was not an invitation to leave at that point but there just was a coldness and a very distance during meetings he would suggest to her that she needed to do a job and a task that involved her being in the kitchen for example as opposed to not some patriarchal memes and began to emerge and his a very aggressive style at that time and a brashness with the members of the group was was causing a lot of you know conflict and the group was just not working well together and he was not able to um, hear the feedback and, and have this other behavioral health uh, specialist work with him um, on that level to, to support that. Uh, he also would silence her voice in the, the broader town hall meetings. The group became very uh, uh, polarized with, you know, a, a, a certain group of people um, who were singled out as, as being, you know, uh, dissidents in the group and needing to go and so that was the this, this story um, and then the person he did have other he did have supporters you know these women and other people some of the people that were very loyal to him younger people and closer in his age range who had skills in terms of videography and videotaping and um, promotion this was the last piece of the story. During one of the meetings, this woman in her position, each uh, leader, each person had a, uh, who had a position was tasked with writing, uh, you know, uh, for each meeting, uh, at least a two-page uh, uh, write-up about your proposal for your area, uh, you know, what your program and what you wanted to do and how you were going to contribute in that particular area. I believe she was in the Ministry of Education or something to that effect. And so she prepared her, her stuff and she was always prepared for each meeting when other members were not all the, all the time. But she was prepared and she presented her ideals and her approach and her plan for education with the community members. And at one of the presentations, um, the one woman who seemed to be intimately connected with him suggested that they 
take this woman's work and put another name on it, um, but not use her name that she had for her program that she developed. That they take it and they put another name on it, one, and the, or the other suggestion that he said, well, well, if you implement that program within the preview of this group, then this group begin to owns the rights to that program. And at that point, she knew that the relationship really was not going to work and it wasn't going to work because why would she give up total rights to a program that she developed to the group when the group could kick her out at any time and then keep rights to her program? So the other suggestion was, well, we just take the program and we'll call it something else. And that, that kind of behavior was like, wow, interesting. So she, um, what happened eventually, you know, the, she she left the group. Um, it was very unpleasant uh, leaving and parting. It was very awkward and very uncomfortable, the dynamics such that they were. And, uh, you know, she went on her way and he went on his way. He became, because of the support that, you know, he had, he continued on. Um, I think he, he moved from that group and he moved on and he stretched out on his own, um, not part of a group, and he, and he struck it out on his own. And... Um, she continues, <laughs> you know that. She uh, continues to uh, work to have people listen to her and her program. That's the story. I wasn't supposed to have that last part. I didn't want you to know that was my story. That's a story, one experience that I had. So you tell me, what are your thoughts and about the dynamics of in the in the in the events that you heard in the story? What are your thoughts if you were that woman? What do you imagine you may think or feel after such an experience? Now, keeping in mind that this is a, a group and uh, individuals who uh, consider themselves to be pan-African uh, and pan-nationalist and uh, who uh, profess uh, love for the African people and a desire for uh, liberation and uh, unification and organization and supporting each other and making change uh, these players were. So you tell me what do you imagine you would think or feel as the woman excuse me as the woman and or as the, the brother or one of the other members in the group uh, what, do you, what do you think? Let me know. Heard that the empress a chant and the lion a roar Oh, what's that?